Wow! What is this? These moths are amazingly beautiful. Well, you can breed them as well if you follow my tutorial. Meet the Chinese moon moth or Actias dubernardi. If you want to breed these pieces, I'm going to explain to you how to do it in five simple steps. Oh my god, wow! This is a Chinese moon moth and it's considered to be one of the most beautiful species of moon moth on planet Earth. And if you follow this guide, I will teach you how to breed it in five steps. Step number one. Step one, the eggs. Let's start, this will be easy. You see, the eggs of the Chinese moon moth are actually easy to take care of. They are easily incubated in plastic boxes and petri dishes. The eggs of this species take about 10 to 15 days to hatch. Spraying them with water is not necessary and only optional, although a little humidity can help. The optimum temperature is 70 to 21 degrees Celsius. In about two weeks, tiny black things appear. These are the newborn caterpillars. These babies need to eat within 24 hours, preferably, because they are very hungry. So how to take care of the caterpillars? I'll show you in the next step. This species is difficult to breed, so listen closely. Step number two. Step number two, the small larvae or babies. Pay close attention. What you're about to need next is plastic containers paper towels and pine tree. So I place the paper towels or tissue paper on the bottom of the container because this absorbs excess moisture and makes it easier to clean. Then I cut the tips of the needles of the pine tree. This is optional but I think it helps the caterpillars to feed better and easier. Next I add a moderate amount of pine tree to the container just like that. This will be the food for the caterpillars. Then. I use a paintbrush to scoop up the baby caterpillars and I place them inside their new enclosure. I use a paintbrush because the babies are very fragile and it's easy to squish them with your fingers by accident. If you've done it right, then you will see clear evidence of feeding. As the small black caterpillars chew into the needles, they are going to grow bigger and bigger. Make sure to change the food and paper towel every few days to keep everything fresh and you will be fine. Now at one point, the caterpillars will grow even bigger and become green in color. When you see this, it means they have entered the third life stage. They are now becoming big caterpillars. And that means they need a bigger enclosure. The current setup is too small for them. So we're gonna show you step number three. You are almost getting there. Step number three. Three big caterpillars. Now this is the most important and difficult step, so please pay close attention. Make sure you buy a bunch of big plastic boxes. Any shape or form works as long as they are very large. I keep the caterpillars in this very big plastic container and they love it. So the fourth and fifth life stage like to have a generous amount of space. A few ventilation holes can help, but they are not strictly necessary. Make sure to give them fresh pine tree at least once a week. They prefer cooler temperatures between 16 and 22 degrees Celsius with a high level of humidity between 70 and 100%. Warmer can work, but this is definitely not optimal. This species needs a humid and cool environment. In the wild, they are found in high altitude, temperate cloud forests in countries such as China, but also a few countries near China. The caterpillars are really spectacular looking. It is normal for them to grow a little bit slowly. It takes about one and a half month, month usually for them to grow from eggs to cocoons. Personally, I raise them in my basement. Why? Because basements are naturally cold and humid, which is exactly what they like. However, if you don't have a basement, it is also possible to raise them indoors. What is interesting is that the larvae have shiny metallic golden patches on their sides. Did you notice? It just makes the caterpillars of these rare moths extra beautiful. Once they are fully grown, some of them 
change color and they become brown to dark green. But why? This is a sign that they want to make cocoons. A lot of caterpillars change color before they make a cocoon. And then if you're lucky, a few days later you will find brown silky things on the bottom of the container. These are the cocoons of the legendary Chinese moon wolf. Please collect the cocoons carefully, they can be fragile if they are in the process of pupating. Well done. But how to take care of the cocoons? Next step. That's it moth fans. That's it moth fans. Step number... Four! A big plastic container and hang a towel on the side if you can. Yes, this is important because the moths need to climb up and hang somewhere if they emerge from the cocoon. Next, add some substrate that absorbs moisture. In my case, I prefer to use vermiculite, a mineral that absorbs moisture, but you can also use moss, for example. Moss can also absorb a lot of water. Make sure that nothing you place in there can decompose or grow mold. That is deadly for the cocoons. And then you can place the cocoons in there, finally. Next, spray it with water once in a while to keep it humid. Please note that they just want to be humid, they don't want to be super wet. Just prevent them from drying out. A few months later the moths will start coming out. They look very silly when they just came out of their cocoons. The first thing they will do is climb and they need a place to hang properly. Hey, this one is hanging down from the towel that I mentioned before. Do you finally see the point? They can't climb up the slippery plastic, but they can use the towel. And if you are lucky, you will have some incredibly beautiful moths at your disposal. But what do we do next? That's right, time for step 5. The moths. Are you ready for the final step? Step number 5. So this is a male Chinese moon moth. Wow! Famously, the males are yellow and pink with long tails. It's incredibly beautiful and you can see why people like to keep them as pets. But what's important to realize is that the females look totally different than the males. This is a female. That's right. This right here is a female. Females have a completely different color. They are bigger and pale green and whitish instead. Now the next important step is to wait until you both have males and females at the same time. This is a pop-up cage. They are especially made for insects. Enclosures made out of netting. If you don't have one, you can also use a laundry basket for the same effect. You can place your moths in one of these enclosures and make sure they are in a dark place at night. These animals are nocturnal and they need darkness to do their thing. And then they will perform the sexy time. Males will hook up with females if you're lucky. This is what a mating looks like. The males are attached to the females by their abdomens. After they have mated, the females will lay eggs. Many eggs, in fact, that you can collect in a petri dish. In two weeks the eggs hatch and the life cycle is completed. Before we have to go, I have two more things to say. First of all, I make it look easy on YouTube, but in reality, this species is difficult to breed. If you are new to breeding moths, it's not recommended to breed the Chinese moon moth unless you are a more experienced breeder. This species is so beautiful that many newbies are attempted to buy them. However, this kind is kind of the same as... Like taking driving lessons in a Ferrari. If you're learning to drive, you're just making it more difficult for yourself. It is often the most beautiful moth species that for some reason can also be the rarest and the hardest to breed. I would like to say thank you for watching. If this video was useful make sure to subscribe. I make tutorials on how to breed rare species of insects. If this sounds interesting to you my channel is probably appealing to you. Thanks until next time cutie pies.